ladies and gents, it is time for the second part of our show. Are you up for that? Yes? I'm going to welcome to the stage a man that I know you guys have been waiting for. He's a nuclear scientist. His name is Matt Gunther. I love the fact you've done this as well. Your friend is here doing a set, and you've been supported as you possibly can by sitting in the front row to be judgmental bastards. <laughs> Fair enough, it's going to have fun. Then his next act is going to be very funny. Please keep up the warmth and affection and welcome to the stage the wonderful Matt Gunther! <laughs> The first thing I said before I came onto the stage was, I really fucking hope I don't trip over that step. Um, I'm sort of infamous for it. Oh, hi guys, I'm Gunther. Um, I tend to actually be pretty apprehensive about telling people what I do. It's not because I don't enjoy it. That's probably actually part of the problem. Uh, it's just that when I do tell people, they seem to want to punch me in the face. Yeah, that's right. Some of my friends would actually say that I don't even need to say anything to be punched in the face. But, yeah, I'm, I work in a very attractive industry that everyone wants to be involved in. I work in the nuclear waste management industry. That's what I work in. And I look at ways that I can keep you safe from said radiation, but try telling that to judgmental anger management problem people at energy summits. I had one guy come up to me recently and say, you, yeah you, I'm talking to you, you make me sick. You guys destroy the environment and everything in your path. So okay, a bit weird, okay, that's a, that's a bit intense. Uh, and then all of a sudden he says to me, yeah, yeah, I don't know if you read The Guardian this morning, but your Japanese counterparts in Fukushima have just come up with a new mascot. Fuck up, he. Yeah. <laughs> Eat that, you nuclear numpty. I was like, oh, okay, okay, well, not really sure how to react to this, but um, anyway, being that you're so judgmental, which industry do you work for? Oh, I work for the oil industry. <laughs> now, what happened there? Yeah, hmm, biggest environmental disaster in the 21st century. But anyway, we do get a lot of people coming up to us and wanting to attack us without necessarily any basis for it at all. And some people, like to make stuff up. Take everybody's favourite piece of toilet paper, the Daily Mail. Yeah, those guys. They like to make shit up all the time. So imagine it's 2010 and they publish this article. Olympic Armageddon, how terrorists could send a nuclear bomb to attempts to target the London 2012 Games. Now, I don't know if you can read the bomb, but the Daily Mail are actually so transparent in making their shit up, they've actually employed a top thriller writer to write their pieces for them. Yeah, and don't worry guys, if you can't picture this in your head of what's going to happen at the opening ceremony, the Daily Mail have provided you with an accurate visual simulation of what will happen at said event. <laughs> Yeah. What it should read is imagine a future full of shit Photoshop. <laughs> but yeah, these guys tend to like making shit up. But I'd like you to picture your mother, who doesn't necessarily have much of a scientific knowledge when it comes to these things, how she would react to reading this. My mother reacted like this. She threw her paper up in the air, proceeded to flap her hands quite wildly. Like and she proceeded to run out of the house, whereby she picked a shovel up from the shed and decided to start digging. <laughs> yes, that is shoveling, by the way. Uh, and she continued to shovel. I went out and said, Mother, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? Matthew, I'm building an Anderson shelter. <laughs> we live in North Wales, which is 200 miles away, Mother. We are, that's never going to happen. I will tell you what's going to happen at the London Olympic opening ceremony. A guy comes on, dressed like Abraham Lincoln, he starts banging Winston Churchill, and at the closing ceremony, Winston Churchill pops out of a really shit conservative birthday cake, so by Big Ben. And all of a sudden, there's a countryside cult ritual involving people with Morris dancers and poles with threads. And then, yeah, James Bond comes on, everyone's excited about James Bond, and hashtag OMFB, OMFG, I can't even say it, amaze balls, the Queen's come to the Olympics. Isn't everyone so excited? And she jumps out of a helicopter, and everyone pretends for a while that it is the real queen, but it isn't, it isn't. And David Beckham turns up and he travels up the River Temple with a match and a torch, yeah. Not a dirty bomb or anything like that, Mother. And it ends in quite a profound and quiet ceremony. With a nice torch being lit for everyone to see. And then it finishes with... <laughs> and 
Okay, I need to get the gym. Uh, and my mother looks up at me and she says, Get another shovel. <laughs> but anyway, guys, where did this fear come from? Because everyone seems to be fearful of nuclear. And I'll tell you where it comes from. It comes from a place pe with people pumped full of silicon, hydrogen peroxide, and enough, enough recreational drugs to sink the Titanic. I'm, of course, talking about Hollywood. Yeah, Hollywood guys. They make stuff up all the time. And it turns out that they end up doing stuff that, you know, no one can seem to comprehend. They basically get radiation, and what they did in the post-40s was they thrust it up the arses of innocuous insects and animals to generate things like giant lizards, yeah, robots, and flies with drills for hands. When would a fly ever come into contact with drills? I'm just trying to picture this, how he's mutated. He's there drilling some MDF, and he's like, oh shit, all of a sudden he's big, he's got giant drills for hands, yeah. And there's another type of people. Them. That's right, guys. Just like Hollywood run out of ways, uh, but sorry, like George Lucas run out of ways to butcher the image of Star Wars with a bat in the shape of Jar Jar Binks, so too did Hollywood run out of ways to turn insects into giant men in rubber suits, simply referring to them as them. That's right, guys. And what they actually like to do is they actually like to create... You know, they like to try and explain cultural trends, because they got to a point where they didn't really convert anything anymore. So they thought, right, we need to explain some strange cultural trends that no one understands. So take Exhibit A. Exhibit A, yeah, Nuclear Man. Yeah, this guy is from the naffest film of all time. Superman IV, The Quest for Peace. The most quintessentially Cold War film you will ever see committed to film. And basically, this guy, right, Gene Hackman's character, Lex Luthor, yeah, this guy was born in a nuclear explosion. I mean, radiation could only explain why anyone in the 1980s would want to grow that monstrosity that is on his head. And it's something that I like to call the mullet mutation. That's right, guys. Radiation was the sole cause for people like this growing mullets. Yeah, even Teen Heartthrob Mario Lopez from everyone's favourite show, Saved by the Bell, and everybody's favourite Batman, George Clooney. That's right. And even your very morally upstanding witness of the truth, Julian Assange has done one in his quest for truth. And obviously his quest to avoid prosecution in the sexual assault case. Um, but... <laughs> Sorry guys, but, you know, that's true. Um, <laughs> so anyway, there's also been behind some very esoteric cultural myths and horror myths radiation, such as a very strange illness that only affects a small number of women, called vagina dentata, okay? That's right, guys. In order to tarnish the image of nuclear power even further, Hollywood reckon that radiation causes women to grow teeth in all the wrong places. Yeah. But are we looking in all the wrong places? Now, I don't, I obviously, really don't mean that. Uh, what I do mean, <laughs> wow, uh, sorry. Wow, I didn't write that either, that was great. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Right, so nuclear, obviously, Hollywood are obsessed with turning things into nightmarish monsters, but what I reckon nuclear does, it actually turns people into figurative monsters. That's what happens. Everyone looks like this, including environmentalists, whenever you mention the word nuclear. Quite ironic, considering he's green. But yeah, they, a lot of them get really pumped up and angry. And I reckon it's because nuclear isn't necessarily willing to admit to its problems sometimes. So, rather than shy away from these people, what we need to do is engage them. What we also don't want to do is generate personal vendettas against them. Because sometimes we've got a habit of doing that. Take everybody's uh, morally upstanding beacon, the Catholic Church. That's right, guys. The Catholic Church, with all the scandals they've been through, have started attacking us now. And basically, what they've done is wrought a monster upon us in the shape of this nun. An 83-year-old mum known as Megan Rice. <laughs> she really looks sweet, doesn't she? No, she is not. According to the US military, this woman is a foreign enemy saboteur, okay? <laughs> Along with two accomplices last year, Megan Rice, 
decided to take a massive set of bolt cutters, an air rifle, and a two litre bucket of goat's blood, and they proceeded to cut through three security fences, and they made their way in to a US military run uranium enrichment facility. Okay? According to army testimony, she began to merrily skip around the facility, and singing hymns, actually, like Shine, Jesus, Shine, among the greatest hits favourites, and they proceeded to throw goat's blood all over the walls, okay? And no one stopped them for three hours. No one stopped them for three hours. Do you know why? Because according to army testimony, the soldiers thought there was a chapel on site. Right, I'm just trying to picture this in my mind. Now, this woman is up for trial now. She's actually being sentenced to 10 years in prison for industrial sabotage. And all for that. That's what they did, okay? I don't know what's worse, that the US military thought a pagan-style sacrifice and ritual could take place on their land, or it took them three bloody hours to do that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, but, you know, what we need to do, rather than actually change people and, into hallucinogenic pagan cults, we, as I said, we need to engage these people properly. So rather than shying away from arguments on monsters, batshit crazy nuns, and all sorts of things, what we need to do is to engage people. So I'll leave you with one thought. Now, that, that guy at the beginning actually was... A chap called Hayward from BP, who I had a chat to. I don't know if you knew him, but he did get sacked. Um, but basically, he obviously said that we fucked up. So I'm going to start a rehabilitation campaign for us all and say, listen guys, sometimes, yes, we do fuck up here. But I'll be damned if no other industry doesn't either. Thank you guys, I've been Gunther, and have a good night.